Hello friends and fellow internet users. My name is Tony. I uh, take photos of stuff. I live in Los Angeles and this is my first video and wait, it's not my first video. It's my first video with audio. So um, it's going to be a little weird for me, but I'm going to talk through editing a photo um, and kind of my workflow and what I do. Um, and today, I'm going to do something potentially a little complicated with my images. And to kind of start off, the way I treat photography for myself, um, it's, it's a way of keeping record of things. I was always terrible at keeping a diary when I was younger. Um, so taking photos was a way for me to remember what I was doing in that particular time, that holiday, vacation, um, hanging out with friends, going to a special place, it's, uh, it's a record keeping for me. And photography is about telling a story. And those memories are, are a story to myself. And when I show other people, I, I try and convey that emotion and, and that feeling I got when I was in that moment. Um, it's, it's funny, really, because I try and take photos right out of camera and just do some minor edits. But sometimes I like to get a little more creative with the things I'm doing. Um, and sometimes I'll really modify a scene to better portray what I saw and felt during that time. And this example here is going to go over that, um, over that particular scenario. Um, hopefully that made sense. So I have pre-selected some images from a trip to Hawaii um, I took with um, my uh, wife back in 2013. Um, she was there for work for a, a surf competition. I was there just to relax and have fun. And we didn't get that much time, her and I, to just hang out. But this one particular night, she'd finished work, and we decided to take a drive up to um, a place called Sunset Beach in Oahu. And we just sat there, relaxed, and watch the sunset. We watched the people, you know, hanging out in the waves. We watched people walking up and down the beach. It was such a, a beautiful evening, you know. You can see here some of those clouds. Um, it really gave such a dramatic feel to the landscape. And uh, I was super excited to uh, start taking some photos. And these selections here, you'll see probably, like, between... 15 to 20 minutes before sunset, and then right at the bottom you'll see just as the sun dipped below the horizon. Um, so there's a couple of these I have like done some quick edits to, I think this one in particular. Um, but what I'm looking to do here is take some of my favorite elements from the photos, so some of them that are before sunset, and then some of them uh, just as the sun has set, because I really love this element of um, people walking. Um, the footprints in the sand, I think, is, is a really great visual. So I might start taking those, and especially these long exposures to the waves. It's much more dreamy. Um, I actually uh, had my 10-stop um, and 6-stop ND filter with me in Hawaii, but I actually broke my uh, filter holder, um, which kind of limited what I could do with my long exposures. So what I actually intend to do here is try and match up some of these um, to make one scene. So enough of my rambling. What I'm going to do, I've, I've actually selected the ones in yellow here for um, the images I think I'm going to take. Um, I really love this sky. Um, look at some sunbeams. Um, I kind of prefer the color of blues up here, but we'll see. I might just take this one. Um, these compositions aren't exactly perfect, but uh, yeah, I'll try and fix that in post. And I love the, uh, the waves here and the footprints here, so I'm actually going to mark this one for, for uh, editing as well. Um, first of all, I'm just going to quickly go into my develop uh, panel here. Everything is, just make sure everything is reset. Uh, I think it is already. Um, of course, clarity 100, vibrance 100, saturation 100, pretty much done. I'm kidding. I don't really touch those here yet. 
Um, but what I want to do is kind of work with my exposure a little bit. I'm going to drop my highlights just a touch. And sometimes I don't do it with the whites, but I want to make sure I, I have as much detail as possible. Um, if I touch my shadows up just a little bit, I don't want to go into HDR mode. Um, and it was all, it felt a lot warmer than this, especially in the shadows. So I'll kind of play with split toning a little bit. Um, not too much, but I'll give it a bit of red. And I'm not too worried here yet about matching up the color because I'm obviously going to be changing a lot of this sand to, to the other one that had footprints in it. But I want to get a general feeling of what the, um, the, the, the scene was. Uh, I'll just do my typical sharpening things. And I'll play with uh, some of my filters down here to pop the colors. Uh, and there shouldn't be any real noise in the sky, uh, but I'll fix that later anyway. Um, and knowing me, I've probably got some dust spots all over the place, but that's okay. Um, okay, I'll leave that one for now. Let me see what's going on here. This one actually looks pretty good out of camera. Composition's a little off. I don't know what I was thinking in terms of the rule of thirds. Look at that. That's terrible. Anyway. Again, I will, I will fix that. I think I was going for trying to get the waves in the corner here. Um, but yeah, I'll give it a bit more boost in those underexposed areas. Of course, it was very bright in the sky, so my shadows uh, were a little, um, little shadowy. That's a word. Uh, a boost in temperature. I always give this a bit of a whack up. Um, just give it a bit more saturation. Make sure everything is nice and sharp. A lot of this will actually be changed later on. And um, we see these ones down here. I'm actually going to leave these ones. No, I lied. Got some ghost people here just hanging out. These, this was uh, actually shot with my Canon 5D Mark III with a 16 to 35 millimeter. I think uh, the Canon. One Canon uh, 1635 f 2.8. Um, man, those, look at those colors in the sky. This is pretty much out of camera, and it's wow, we got really lucky that night. Um, actually, I'm, I'm not going to crop anything right now, I'll fix that later. Um, to boost the blues a little bit, make sure we go in sharp here. In my raw image, I do want to make sure I've got enough details in the shadows. Just kind of boost that a little bit. A clipping touch in the highlights. There we go. And just because these two were taken, <coughs> uh, sorry, these two were taken a very similar time, I'll actually just um, copy my settings. Sure, all of them will do. This might not be the best, but we'll see. I also have to say, my workflow here is not um, necessarily perfect for everyone. It's just, uh, this is what I've been working with for the past uh, few years. I'm actually going to select these now. I'm going to edit in Photoshop. I'm running fairly certain the latest version of Photoshop. Um, my computer's running a little slow because I'm recording video and editing photos. Um, so I'm opening all these into a layer, into layers in one image. Also drinking a little bit of wine, so photo might get a little crazy. All right. So, like an idiot, I actually didn't open them up um, as layers. So I'm just going to take this one as my base. I'm just going to copy them all into here. doesn't really matter which way you do it. Um, this way it might actually work, because I'll keep these ones as, as a base. Give away lock. Um, I'm going to keep these in a group, of which I am going to um, make a copy of. 
All right, so let's kind of break this down and what I'm going to do. I'm going to work this out as I go along. Um, all right, so the sky I want is this one. Let's just rename this sky. Uh, this one has a little more of my clouds that I like. This one's got the footprints. And this one's got a nice little wave going on here that this one doesn't. Uh, it's a slightly shorter exposure, so I'm going to put waves. So ultimately my aim here is to combine all of these photos, which is going to be a challenge because they're all from different times of the day, uh, especially these colors right here, um, into one image. So um, I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to start with these two images here. Um, so actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to bump up my... Um, my canvas size a little bit. I'm going to give myself a bit more room to play around here. Let's make it a square. So really what I'm doing here is giving myself a little bit of room to play around with. Kind of make my composition just a touch better. Lower the opacity here so I can see what I'm doing. You can see there's a bit of match up here. Um, I will say my composition's better on this layer here. I've got more coming in around the rule of thirds, which I'm just going to kind of uh, guess around. It's not exactly right, but um, so I kind of want to play with that a little bit here. That up. So what I really want from this image is the sun that you see here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all of this at the bottom. I'm going to take my erase tool and just simply, oh I could do that. You know what, I'm actually going to do it from a mask because why not. Got my mask backwards. All right, so I'm just going to mask this out. Let's actually bring my opacity up. using the right brush. There we go. Crazy. So I'm just going to do this quite rough for now because I don't really need to uh, get it perfect. So I'm going to change a lot of this foreground. So what I've done is now I have two suns. Obviously that's not what I want. I'm going to bring the base in a little bit more so you don't have the sun over here. Make sure I'm catching the right foreground here. And because the sky is a little random here, it doesn't um, really matter. Uh, if I'm not that accurate, because it is a little bit random. So uh, let me see up here, because I really like the sky below. So these clouds here, they're a little more defined. It gives it a little bit extra in this image. I really want to play with these sunbeams down here in a bit. So I want to keep this one as is. Bring out the sun here. All right, so looking pretty good there. Now the second thing I want to do is bring in these foregrounds. I'm going to bring these to the top here. Let's talk about this. I'm actually just going to concentrate um, 
I'm going to concentrate on this one for now. I'm going to leave the footprints for later. I'll work with this why I made the uh, canvas bigger later on. First thing I need to do is remove the sky here. I'm just going to bring another mask. I'm going to paint the sky out, even though it's so beautiful. It's being kind of random. Sorry if the mouse is loud. I should get a tablet. So actually what I'm realizing here as I do this, I should actually line them up a bit better. <laughs> also it's not going to work at all. So there you go. Go back to masking that out. You know what, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I need to absolutely love these colors here. I'm going to leave those in for now. I'm going to make these colors match up a little later on. Make sure that's looking right. All right, so I've got a bit of the ocean here. I'm actually going to bring in a bit more of uh, the slow shutter speed here. Bring back those waves. They look nice and silky smooth. I need to be careful here that I'm uh, keeping in the correct background. I don't want to spoil that. You see here where well, some sneaky trees come in. Get rid of these people later on. What I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to lower my um, opacity. Keep these colors in a little bit. Brush them out. So they're a little more subtle. Make it a bit more realistic if I want to keep those pinks in. All right, so you can see some big issues in here already. Um, this color does not match this color. So let's um, go ahead and fix that. What I'm going to do, make a new layer. Excuse me. I'm going to go and do a uh, camera raw filter. I'm going to play around here with colors. Because what I don't want is this um, magenta. So you'll see me play around here. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually completely ignoring the sky. The sky's going to change to weird colors. What I'm really concentrating on is, is getting rid of this color here. So how can I do that effectively? All right. So let's go to uh, saturation. Bring down. Some of those colors because I really don't want the magentas or the purples in here. I'm just going to turn a little more black and white. So now it's looking a little crazy. Maybe we can bring back the oranges a little bit. Let's change the hue. Reset this a little bit. Those magentas are going to be a little painful to play with here. So you see it's going a little bit more orangey here. That's what I'm looking to do. All right, so let's get rid of the magentas. Get out of here. So what we have here is actually a bit more of a canvas. And I can um, start coloring in things that are a little more white, which could be kind of fun. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click OK here. Obviously, that looks terrible. Um, once I put a mask on here, I can just start painting out the things I don't want to be affected by, by that. Make sure I put my opacity back up. Bring back the 
correct colors in the sky. And the sand, which is still looking a bit purple. I'll fix that later. I'm being a little more rough than I would normally. I just don't want to bore you with uh, all of this. All right, so we'll concentrate on that sand later on once I put the sand I want in. But now we've removed that color in the in the water here. And there's a ton of different ways I could have done that. Um, that's just one way. It's, um, using uh, luminosity masking is another. What I'm going to do now, um, I'm actually going to start dodging and burning and painting light in into this uh, into the water here. Just with a brush, make it a bit smaller. Drop my opacity down. I'm not sure I like that color. Let's make it a bit more red. And I can take multiple um, goes at coloring this in. I just want to get like a nice little base color in here. And I know at the time, and if you've been to Hawaii, you'll know that the waves are this beautiful um, kind of aqua color that's it's just spectacular to see. So I'm going to add like that color back into the wave here. Maybe I'll just do a little less opacity and uh, color some of this in to that color. You can still see a bit of magenta over here, but that's okay. We'll be fixing that later. And I'm completely uh, eyeballing colors here. If I was doing a full edit, I would uh, spend a bit more time on that. And about that mouse noise is really annoying, so I apologize. I could use my trackpad a bit. What I really want to do is concentrate here where there's this light. I'll make sure that is uh, being shown to true um, natural color. My opacity a bit. Let's make this nice and bright. So this was super bright in person. It was really hard to look at. The sun was kind of breaking out of those clouds. And you see those little sunbeams here, so I'm going to try and enhance those. I have a little bit of ADD here because I keep moving on to different areas, but as long as I stay somewhat focused, I'll get through this. And what I'm doing here is actually um, over highlighting this area because you know in, in real life like I said you, you couldn't really see with your eyes the, the full dynamic range because it's so bright so I want to kind of enhance that feeling so you can see what I'm doing here is kind of brighten that up Let's keep adding these layers on to make it nice and bright if, Painting in this color. I'm affecting this area as well, but I'm, I'm going to take care of that later. But now this ocean is, you know, if we take this away, you can see the difference we've made. Nice bright sky. And I could uh, fine tune that color a little later on. Well, this is looking pretty uh, decent for now. I can't wait to actually play with some of this uh, um, composition because it's killing me right now. Anyway, so that's kind of where we're at now. I'm actually going to combine these layers so I have something to work with. Let's talk about the footprints now. 
have this layer on here. Make sure I uh, lined it up. These footprints are super cool. Luckily, I was pretty much in the same spot the entire time shooting this. I tend to overshoot one area, um, which kind of limits what I come away with, but um, I think it can come handy when I'm trying to do stuff like this. All right, so ultimately, um, I'm pretty happy with where this wave is here. Um, this, um, the ocean didn't bring anything extra here. I love that color, but that's, that could be a separate edit. But what I want to steal here is simply the uh, the footprints. So, oops, put that back to 100. I'm gonna mask, and again, I'm gonna paint out everything I don't want, including those people. Get out of here. I always keep forgetting to change my opacity. I did it earlier. I pretended not to notice. You notice I'm uh, also using a um, flow of 22. I just, when I'm working with areas like this, um, where it doesn't necessarily matter to me too much how things line up, um, I like having a little bit of extra flow so it's not so hard. All right, so we're starting to get that, um, that look in here. A nice glow in the ocean. It's looking pretty cool. All right. I'm going to fine tune this a little bit more. You can do it, computer. Man, the sand is such a weird color right now. All right. Go away. So you can see a little bit, I've maybe taken away a bit of those footprints. I can just bring them back. Got those ghost people here. Which I don't want. So maybe those footprints are going away a little bit. That's okay. You can see the color overlap here isn't perfect, but um, I'm going to take care of that now. Even that out. Whoops, wrong keyboard shortcut. I really need to get a tablet for this stuff. What am I doing? Uh, that's wrong. Okay. I'm painting on the wrong layer. Okay, so that will do for now. All right, so at this point, we're getting close to the, uh, the merge that I want. So I'm gonna change the color of the, uh, the sand now with a camera raw filter. Let's see a couple ways I can do this. I can maybe just change the hue. Maybe do that and I can color it in myself later on. But ultimately what I'm wanting here is to change those oranges into a little bit more sand colored. So not feeling it yet. Let's keep it at that for now. It's pretty ugly, but um I will fix that. I also just noticed I've left a little bit of weird color over here, so. We'll fix that in a minute. Remind me to come back to that. All right, so let's go ahead and color this sand in um, with, some, with some light. If I remember, actually, I go back to, um, Let's see what color the sand is. It's not necessarily the nicest color sand here, so I'm gonna do some quick editing on that. It's giving me this dark color. I'll bring it up here. That's not too bad. Bring my opacity down, of course. Let's kind of start coloring it in now.
All right, so we're getting a nice sand color here. Can't wait to get rid of these people as well. All right, so we're getting um, a bit better. I'll fix that later. It's going to annoy me. It's the so what I've done is just paint over a bit more orange sand color. And do a bit more. And I can, once I've uh, kind of finished my composure, I'm actually going to fix that a little bit too. All right, let's just make a new layer. You can do it, computer. Let's take care of some of these people. They're annoying me a little bit, these ghost people. I'm going to attempt to see what Photoshop can do with its uh, fill layer here. Sometimes I'm super impressed with what it can do. Other times I have no idea what's going on. Content aware fill, that's what I was saying. That's not too bad. Some more people over here. In my story that I'm imagining um, at the time, it was there wasn't all these people here. In my mind, it was just me and my wife, and that was super cool. Get out of here, people. There's a little bit of a ghost over here. Being a little rough here, so I would normally take a bit more time. Just want these people playing in the sand. You don't exist. They're actually a little spooky. That's cool. I might fine tune that bit because that looks terrible. Get rid of you as well. Get out of here. Also noticing that someone left something. out of here. I don't I, I actually don't normally say that out loud when I'm editing photos. Um, normally pretty normal. Yeah that looks pretty crappy. Alright. Look at these two chasing each other. No fun on my beach. Maybe he just tripped her up. It kind of looks that way. Let's just say he tripped her up. She's falling right now. I didn't catch that part. Well, that that was not what I wanted. <laughs> Let's get rid of these guys. And we're almost done with this image. Go away. <laughs> this new version of them can also go. Get out of here. All right, so in, uh, if I had more time, I would absolutely go ahead and help them out um, by cleaning that up. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So you can see where we're at now. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and start warping this to how I want it to look. So what I'm going to do first is actually crop the image. So about here, and then I'm going to free transform. I left a bit at the bottom, so I'll get rid of that in a minute. Warp. This lets me know where my rule of thirds is. So let's have this wave come in the corner a little bit. Okay, so I've moved this corner out as well, just to make these footprints look a little more legit. Bring them in like that. Now, I'm kind of breaking the rule of thirds a little bit. Just kind of bring you down a little. Where are we at here? Okay, so we're getting a bit closer. This weird bump here, but that's kind of fine. I would fix that if I had more time. If it wasn't a quick demo, I'll bring these clouds up a little bit. Okay, so it's looking a little more how I'm thinking. 
maybe I would bring this in a little towards the thirds because I've got the sun there. Let's just leave it at that for now. You see the horizon isn't fully straight, but I would spend more time on that. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is apply the autumn effect, which is kind of blurring out some of the things I want blurred out. Um, it's a pretty popular thing to see. This is a 24 megapixel camera. Leave it around there. Bring my opacity down to around 24 or 23 range. Add my mask and invert my mask because I only want to paint in what I want to be. Um, have that dreamy, blurry effect. Well, that was silly. There we go. Press the wrong button. That's what happens when I'm drinking wine while doing this. Bring my opacity up, and I'm just going to paint in where I want blurriness. This is very subtle, and that's okay, because that's all I want. Because really I want the focal point to be around these uh, footprints here that's leading you into the image. Let's see what we've got. So you can see that it's just a little more blurry over there. It's looking pretty nice. You can see now, maybe I'm going to bring out these trees a little bit. This is a nice focal point. But maybe I will blur a bit of the sand over here. Kind of gets um, rid of those weird artifacts after the uh, after I had those people in earlier. Yeah, you know, just because I want to, I want to fix this line a little bit. Yeah, that'll do for now. I know there's certain people that might kind of anger, but. It's just a quick demo. Now I'm going to do some quick fine tuning with the camera raw filter. Make it just a touch warmer. I'm going to add in a bit more magenta into the sky. I'm going to boost my highlights a little bit. I'm also going to add a touch bit of clarity now that I've um, kind of added a bit more of a blur effect. Vibrance because I want some. Don't judge me. I'm going to touch the whites when I do some blending later. Put my S curve in because it's just kind of what I always enjoy doing. And I'll leave it at that for now. Just gives it a little bit more pop. This kind of bothers me a little bit, but I'll leave it in for now. I might fix it in a minute. Um, so I'm going to mess around. I don't necessarily need to in this photo, but um, I'm going to play around with uh, some mid-tones here. Ooh, this annoys me too. Oh, I already loaded. I was waiting for it to load, but it was right there in front of me. I'm going to bring those mid-tones a little bit. There's a bit more pop in that sky. It might be a little too saturated, but that's okay. I'll, I'll come back to that later. And um, I could actually play around a little more with those filters. I might see what my lights look like. Let's look at my light masks here. I might just kind of boost the ultra lights with, um, with my brush here. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I will use the sponge tool, which kind of increases the saturation a little bit of these lights. Give it a bit more pop. See what that does. Oh, I put desaturate. I don't want that. I always do that. That's the first thing I always um, forget to look at. Kind of saturate that, those bright areas. 
thinking very minor touch that kind of brings back that pop of orange. All right, so I could uh, spend a bit more time with my luminosity masking, but I'm just going to leave that for now. And um, I think pretty happy with that now. Um, the horizon's still kind of bothering me, but I'm not going to waste the other guy's time by going over that. So I'm going to save this. And this will take forever to save, so I'll probably speed up the video. Okay, it's finally saved, so it should automatically update. Yes, I know, it's too big, whatever. All right, so what we have here is an image. That's okay. Uh, it's not my favorite image ever. Uh, there's a couple of things I can just fine tune now. I don't know why I'm opening that. Um, in my HSL sliders, I'm going to take, why did I do that? Saturation. Get rid of these bits. That didn't work at all. I don't know what I'm doing. There you go, <laughs> saturation. Uh, I want to make sure the magenta is kind of lower here, but I've got to be careful of what else that affects in the, in the image. Um, there you go. Bring those down. Okay, that kind of fixed that. And also the blues are a little too high, so I'm going to make them a bit more natural. Maybe pump those oranges up a little bit to make it a bit more dreamy, if you will. <laughs> Again, I would spend more time fixing this horizon line. I know there's uh, certain people that would really annoy. I'm just going to add like a little bit of a flattened uh, or crushed blacks a little bit. So that's looking pretty cool. Obviously, you need 100%. Oh, nice. Clarity. Let's forget that. So I'm pretty happy with that for now. That's kind of uh, an example. Let's look at that in full screen. This is an example of um, kind of my workflow and kind of tackling a more challenging image. Uh, one that's clearly taken a lot longer than I thought it would, but um, applying elements from four different images that um, really help me remember how I um, how I felt that day, just sitting here relaxing, enjoying the view uh, with my wife. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So enjoy. If you have any questions, so let me know.